We're going to talk about a, a, a clock and a calendar for use on the planet Mars. Uh, I'm not uh, right now going to go into uh, any depth into my plan for how humans uh, can settle Mars. I'm going to talk about that at length tomorrow morning, 9. And so if you want to hear about that, come then. Uh, if you want to read about that, I have a book on the subject, which is available here after this talk. Um, you buy it, I'll sign it. It's a great deal. Um, but the, uh, okay, what I'm going to limit myself to is, is clocks. Now, uh, we need, well, you know, calendars are ideal, calendars are a very simple means of predicting the weather, okay, in a rough sense. Uh, in January 2001, what is the probable weather here? Cold. Cold, okay, we know that. Okay, what is the probable weather at the Pathfinder landing site on January 2001? They have clocks. We don't know. You, well, you don't know, okay, right now, because you don't have a calendar for March. You don't know what the season is on Mars in January 2001. Okay? If you had a calendar, if I told you that it was the month of Virgo and you know what that meant, um, the, uh, then you might be able to make a, a pretty good guess of what the weather would be like there. Um, so, so calendars are actually means by which one can ascertain what the likely physical conditions are in their environment at uh, a particular time. And in fact, this is why astronomy was invented back in ancient Egypt, because if you had a calendar, you would know when spring was uh, going to be, and when the Nile was going to overflow its banks, and when you should plant your seeds, and so forth and so on. Uh, and that's a very important reason why we need calendars. Now, similarly, we also need clocks. Okay, you know, um, if I tell you that it's 9 o'clock in the morning, you have a pretty good idea of what the, the sun conditions are likely to be, uh, how high above the horizon the sun is, uh, etc. Uh, and in fact, clocks are useful for a lot of other reasons um, that have to do, for instance, with navigation and other things. Clocks are the basis for figuring out where you are on the planet. That is how we have drawn our maps. And that is how navigators, uh, for uh, the well, the past 300 years anyway, since there have been good clocks, uh, have used to navigate across the surface of the planet. Clock is fundamental to figure out uh, longitude. Now, um, Mars, Mars has a day that is 24 hours 39 minutes long, which is remarkably close to the terrestrial day. It's the only other planet that's like that. And that's very important to help us settle Mars because with a day-night cycle of 24 hours, plants will grow just fine in greenhouses lit by natural sunlight. But it's still not the same. Uh, and if you try to use a terrestrial clock on Mars, you know, the day would go and, um, you know, 24 hours would come around and the planet wouldn't have quite turned around. And after, uh, really, just a couple of weeks, your clock would have no relationship whatsoever to uh, whether it was sunshine or dark outside. So you want a clock that's oriented towards Mars. Now, there have been a lot of suggestions for this, actually. This is an old game. Uh, it goes back to Edgar Rice Burroughs, who devised interesting clocks with unique units of time uh, in his Mars novels in the uh, early 20th century. And uh, uh, Bruce McKenzie just spoke, uh, once designed a clock for Mars that used decimal units. Uh, the other people have proposed a clock for Mars, Kim Stanley Robinson, Ben Clark, typically which involve using terrestrial units of time, 24 hours as long as our hours, plus an extra 39 minutes. That would be kind of the uh, slip time. Yeah, you got it. Uh, that in other words, there would be 24 and a fraction hours on your clock, and then it would start over. And that would allow you to use the same units of time that we have here on Earth um, in terms of using hours and seconds and, and minutes, which has something to be said for it. Uh, but I don't think this is right uh, because of the relationship between time and navigation. Okay? The Earth turns in 24 hours, and it is 360 degrees around. 
which means what an hour corresponds to is 15 degrees of longitude. What a minute corresponds to is 15 minutes of longitude. What a second corresponds to is 15 seconds of longitude. And all the equations that are used to determine longitude on Earth, to conduct navigation here, and also to do astronomy on Earth in terms of you know, hours of right ascension and, and declination and so forth, are all based upon this concept. And um, since maps on Mars have already been drawn, and they have been drawn using the same base 60 convention, which is in universal use on Earth for measuring angles and therefore longitude and latitude. Okay. Um, so this goes way, way back to ancient Babylonia. Um, uh, if we want to have a system of time that is coherent with this system of making maps, then we have to, in fact, divide the Martian day into 24 Martian hours each of which is in 24 Martian, uh, excuse me, 60 Martian minutes, and each of those into 60 Martian seconds. Now, this system has the advantage of having a simple universal conversion factor between all Martian time units and Earth units. That is, one Martian hour equals 1.025 Earth hours, one Martian minute equals 1.025 Earth minutes, and one Martian second equals 1.025. Earth seconds. Um, some people find this concept uh, to be um, annoying because we're introducing a new type of second, a Martian second. And the second, of course, is a fundamental unit of physics uh, in the, uh, well, in both the British and metric systems. We use seconds as the basic unit of time. I don't think that's a problem. If you're quoting the frequency of a crystal and you say it is at such and such megahertz, which means so many million cycles per second, you are simply talking in terms of terrestrial seconds, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, so you can still use a terrestrial second as a unit of physics. But if you want to um, use a, um, a unit of time that is useful for clocks on Mars for people to use, you would use Martian seconds. And you'd be aware of the fact that they're slightly different. Just us on Earth, British tons are slightly different than metric tons, and we have many other units that we use for different purposes. Um, the, it is interesting, you know, on Earth we have a unit which is favored by navigators, which is known as the nautical mile. And uh, the nautical mile equals one minute of latitude. Okay? And that's why it's very easy to use on maps. Slightly different than a skip statute mile, and it is, of course, considerably different from a kilometer. Uh, the, it is interesting that if you were to take a nautical mile defined as one minute of latitude on Mars, it's almost exactly a kilometer. Uh, so on Mars, navigators and metric system buffs can finally get along. Uh, so that is the kind of clock system that I advocate for Mars. Uh, but then we come to the need for a calendar, okay? Um, calendar. Mars's day, Mars's year rather, is divided into 669 souls. A soul being a Martian day, which as we've seen is a little more than 2% more than an Earth day. So it's somewhat more than um, that many Earth days, but it's 669 Martian days. And, um, and once again, there's been any number of schemes for dividing the Martian year up into months. For example, one scheme, which is actually presented in an extremely beautiful artistic calendar that's on sale in the, in the exhibit room right now by some artists here at the uh, University of Wisconsin, is to divide, say, that what a month is. A month is a time period of roughly 30 days. Uh, and uh, so they divided the Martian year up into um, I believe 20 uh, months each on the order of 34 days, 34 souls rather. Some are a little longer, some are a little shorter. And there you go. And that kind of calendar is convenient for such things as saying, well, if I'm going to be paid monthly, then you're paid in amounts with roughly the frequency that one would get paid monthly on Earth. Okay. Uh, but a month actually has a physical meaning. Uh, a month on Earth is a essentially, well, is a twelfth of a year, uh, but 
it is 30 degrees of travel around the sun. And that's what it is. Now, uh, so that within a three months, you travel one season. In three months, you go from an equinox to a solstice, or a solstice to an equinox. That's what we do here on Earth. Uh, and uh, if you define months on Mars that way, well then, first of all, the months tend to be uh, longer on the order of, of uh, 55 days or so. Uh, but furthermore, they're of unequal length, okay? because uh, Mars is in an elliptical orbit. And in certain parts of its orbit, it's closer to the sun and thus travels faster than when it is in the other parts of its orbit when it's farthest from the sun, and it goes slow. So if you actually, so seasons on Mars are of unequal length, and significantly unequal, uh, not just different by a day or two as they do on Earth. Uh, so if you define months in this way, and I think this is the correct way to define months, um, then uh, you have to have months of, of different uh, lengths. Now furthermore, now by the way, to the extent there is a calendar in use on Mars right now, this is what they use. That is the calendar that, for instance, the mission planners use uh, at Jet Propulsion Lab, okay, is what they call, they call solar longitude. They say Mars is at so many degrees of solar longitude, with zero degrees of solar longitude being the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, okay, the equivalent of March 21st on Earth, which, by the way, is when the year used to begin here, uh, back before calendar reforms, done in the Renaissance. But, uh, the, uh, uh, but they begin the year with the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere. That's zero degrees of solar longitude. 90 degrees of solar longitude is the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. 180 is the fall equinox in the northern hemisphere. And 270 would be the winter solstice. And that's what they use because it's a convenient way if you know how many degrees of solar longitude you're at, you can know what the seasons are on Mars. Um, so basically, what my calendar for Mars is, is 12 months, each representing 30 degrees of solar longitude. So that it actually corresponds to the one which mission planners today find practical. But by the way, I would also add that in planning spacecraft orbits at Mars right now, the mission planners at JPL implicitly, not explicitly, but they implicitly use a clock of the kind that I described. For example, they will say that a spacecraft orbiting Mars is in a 2 a.m., 2 p.m. orbit. And what do they mean by that? They mean that in terms of local sun angle, it's in an orbit which is the same as 2 a.m., 2 p.m. would be on Earth. So their 2 a.m., 2 p.m. are actually Martian hours. Of the, and they are separated by 12 Martian hours from each other. Okay. So similarly, these are, 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 are what people who are doing practical missions are finding convenient already for operating on Mars. Well, we're going to have 12 months. What should we name them? We could name them April, May, June, etc. But there's a problem with that, and that if I quoted you a date and I said it was April 12th on Mars, uh, that might be rather confusing in terms of what do you mean it's April 12th, which is clearly uh, also a date on Earth, and they wouldn't match. Uh, we could come up with totally novel names for months, uh, you know, like in the French Revolution, you know, with Brumaire and Thermidor and, and, and so forth. I think it's kind of fun. And, and the people with the calendar next door, they chose to name their months after the Greek gods and goddesses, which is uh, kind of nice. Uh, but uh, what I chose to name my months after were the signs of the zodiac. Now, why use the signs of the zodiac uh, for months? Am I, I into astrology or something? I'm not into astrology. The signs of the zodiac, the zodiac constellations are positioned around the sun. They are in the plane of the ecliptic that Mars and Earth and all the planets uh, are orbiting me. And each of them represents 30 degrees of arc of travel around the sun. Okay? So that if you were to say Mars is in the month of Scorpius, and by that mean that during that month, Mars would be in Scorpius as seen from the sun. Okay? 
That would define Mars's physical position in the solar system, okay? Where it is, and, and you would know um, where it is with respect to other planets, which are would be in other constellations as seen in the sun. Now, if we choose to define the month, name the months that way, and the other advantage of using these uh, astrological um, uh, names for months is that they're universally known. Rather than coming up with new names, you know, Thermidor, Brumaire, one guy who wrote a calendar in the Journal of British Interplanetary Society named the months after all of his relatives. Uh, he, uh, he called it the Darian calendar because his son's name was Darius. But th these are universally known names. Um, and, uh, and by the way, this invention of using Mars in Gemini as in Gemini as seen from the sun is the opposite of that used by astrologers. Uh, astrologers, if they say this is the month of Gemini, means that the sun is in Gemini as seen from the earth because astrology is actually based on ancient Babylonian science, which was geocentric in its viewpoint. Uh, that is, they believe that the earth was the center of the solar system. But a heliocentric civilization, a space faring civilization, has got to take a heliocentric viewpoint. So the month of Gemini is when Mars is in Gemini is seen from the sun. And Gemini 1 is the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere. So each of these months represents 30 degrees of solar longitude. Gemini 1 is 0 degrees of solar longitude. Cancer 1 is 30 degrees of solar longitude, etc., all the way around. And you can see that the months are of a rather unequal length in terms of the number of days. Some of them are as long as 66 days, and the shortest are as long as 46 days. That's because of Mars' substantially elliptical orbit. And here it is just again. And uh, the different months, the different number of souls in each month, the, the soul number that each month begins on, and the um, events that occur. The vernal equinox, okay, Sagittarius one is the autumnal equinox uh, in the month of Capricorn, the dust storm season begins. Uh, in the month of Aries, the dust storm season ends. Uh, Tar 56 is New Year's Eve on Mars. Now, the well, that's nice, but what is the date on Mars right now? I mean, okay, I, I've got a calendar, I've got some uh, colorful names for the months and figured out how long they should be, but what's the date right now? Well, there's two ways to figure that out. One is there's an equation, which I'll give to you in a minute. But if you want to know simply the approximate date on Mars, I've got a device, it's in the book too, by the way, um, which will let you figure that out. This here, I call this the Aria Gator, and this allows you to convert Earth dates into Mars dates without equations, although only within a few days, so the equation will give you the exact date. Um, the idea here is the following. This circle is Mars's orbit, and this circle is Earth's orbit around the Sun. Okay? And these diamonds that I've put here represent equal amounts of time of travel roughly 45 Earth days, a little more than 45 Earth days. So that there are eight diamonds uh, in Earth's travel around the Sun, and there are 15 for Mars. Okay? Now, in a given year, well, naturally on January 1st, Earth always starts out right here at the beginning of January. End of December, beginning of January, this is where the Earth year begins. Okay? Where is Mars at the beginning of any given year? Well, I've labeled the diamonds, okay? So, for example, in the beginning of 1997, Earth, of course, was here, and Mars was here, where the 97 is. Okay? So this is where Mars is on January 1st, 1997. All right? Now, how about July 4th, 1997, when Pathfinder landed? Okay? Well, how many diamonds did I have to move to get to July 4th? I had to go one, two, three, Four takes me to July 1st, okay? So then we'll go, go four and a little more. So I go one, two, three, four. Mars was there and Earth was there at the beginning of July. They were relatively close together. And Mars was at the beginning of the month of Scorpius, which is late summer in the Northern Hemisphere. And of course, Pathfinder did land in the Northern Hemisphere. And so 
which was one of the reasons why they landed in the northern hemisphere, because it was late summer there, okay, uh, and uh, they could expect uh, a lot of sunlight and warmer weather than normal. And they could uh, expect that for perhaps uh, as much as 90 days before things slipped into the serious fall. Pathfinder was only designed for 30 days, it managed to live 60, so they pretty much hit it on the spot. Uh, the, uh, the dust storm season begins in the middle of the southern spring, which is to say the middle of the northern fall. Okay, so if they land in here, okay, they can go one, two, three diamonds, three times 45 days, 130 days before they can expect to get into serious dust storms. And so, of course, that was a reasonable choice of the landing site. Uh, the, for any year you want, you can use this. Now, I have on this thing here years going between 1993 and uh, 2007. What happens if you have a year outside of that? What about 2008, which isn't listed here? Well, it just so happens that the time periods of Mars' orbit and Earth's orbit have the relationship almost exactly of 15 eighths. And what that means is that every 15 years, the two planets repeat the same relative positions with each other. The synodic period is 15 years. So as far, 2008 is the same as 1993, okay? It's, uh, or uh, 1963, being 30 years before 1993, or 2 times 15, is also the same as 1993. 1963, 1978, uh, 1993, 2008, um, you know, 2023, these are all the same. So by adding or subtracting 15 in any multiple you want from these dates, you can figure out where Mars uh, and Earth are with respect to each other. Okay. Now, the, I know what the season is on Mars. Now also, to travel to Mars, okay, um, well, depending upon the trajectory that you're on, it takes, well, typically between six and nine months. Pathfinder, for example, took about seven months to get to Mars, which is five of these diamonds. Okay. Now, it's also the case that when you go from Earth to Mars, you want to hit Mars when it's on the opposite position um, around the sun from where Earth was when you left. That's called the home and transfer. Okay. So, for example, uh, Pathfinder uh, launched Mars, uh, I believe, in uh, November 96. Okay. So, uh, if here is January 97, November 96 is one nine and backwards. Here was Mars in November 96. Here was Earth, of course, in November. Okay, and as we've seen, uh, we go forward one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there five diamonds. We get to right here, which is where it was when Earth moved forward five diamonds. One, two, three, four, five to get to the landing time. So actually, if you use this, you can actually figure out when launch windows are from Earth to Mars, and vice versa. Um, okay. Now, um, the other thing you need for a calendar is a year. And that's, of course, almost completely arbitrary. We could start the Mars calendar with the birth of Christ, or the birth of Kepler, or anything. Uh, the, um, but, uh, what I think is the easiest to do is to start the Mars calendar on a year in which the Mars year begins at the same time as the Earth year. In other words, you want to start the Mars calendar on a year okay, in which Mars is right here at Gemini 1 when Earth is at January 1. Okay, so that we can start them both at the beginning of their year at the same time. Now, as you can see, 2006 uh, would qualify, um, as would therefore take away 15 is 1991. But there's nothing particularly special about 2006 or 1991 with respect to Mars. Um, to me, Martian history begins, uh, perhaps, 
at the first time you sent a spacecraft to Mars. Well, that was um, a Mariner uh, in um, 1965. 1965 is not a year in which has this effect. But the first year before that, in which we have Jan January 1 and Gemini 1 occurring at the same time, would be 1961. So, 1961 is the beginning of the year 1 on Mars. And uh, because then we can start both years on the same day. Uh, it's the first year, or it's the last year, before actual exploration uh, of Mars began. So, with that in mind, here's a list of uh, some of the great dates in Martian history. Every Martian kid will have to memorize in school if they want to graduate fourth grade. So the calendar begins January 1st, 1961. That's Gemini 1 of the year 1. The Mariner 4 flyby on July 15th, 1965 is the 25th day of Libra of the year 3. Okay? Viking 1 landing July 20th, 1976. Virgo 6. Uh, of the year nine, and so forth. And uh, so you can calculate uh, any date you want, um, actually using this equation, that uh, Mars year uh, is one plus eight fifteenths of the Earth year minus 1961. And so for example, you take, you take the, a certain date on Earth and you put it in decimal form. Say July 1st, 1973, would be 1973.5, because July 1st is halfway through the year. Okay? Uh, it's the beginning, it's right after the six months have gone by. So 1973.5 minus 1961 is 12.5. Multiply that by 8 fifteenths, add 1, you get the Mars year in decimal form. Uh, I believe it's 7 point something. And so you know you're in the year 7, and you take the remaining part, I believe it's 7.667 actually. Um, which is to say seven to two thirds. So you're in the year seven, you take the part that's after the whole number, two thirds, multiply that by 669, you get 446. The 446 soul of the year will put you in the month of Capricorn, um, probably around uh, 24 days into Capricorn. Because Capricorn begins on soul number 422. So that's how you can figure out any date you want. Now, you know, we today are much better prepared to send people to Mars than we were to send people to the moon in 1961 when John F. Kennedy started the moon program. Okay. Uh, it's further away to Mars, but relative to the kind of technology we have now, it's a much easier task. And there's no doubt in my mind that if the United States wanted to today, uh, we can have people on Mars within 10 years. In particular, we could launch the launch window to Mars uh, around that time will open in October of 2007. And if we take an optimal trajectory, we will land on Mars on April 9th, 2008, which, by the way, is my 56th birthday. Um, the, uh, now, April 2008. Well, where are we? Well, 2008 is the same as 1993. So here's Mars in January 2008. Okay, we're talking April, we're talking moving ahead, really uh, just two and diamonds and a bit. One, two, and here we are in Leo, and it actually turns out to be Leo 15 of the year 2008. And that will be late in the northern spring, sort of the equivalent in Martian terms of late May on Earth in the northern hemisphere, late spring. Okay. Beautiful weather. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, finally make it to Mars, and it'll be about time.
Well, just be negative numbers. It would be, uh, you know, oh, Capricorn yeah. four. Uh, 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 I haven't worked that part out that then. Uh, but the, uh, you know, I just thought it would be BC. BC. <laughs> Any other questions in the back, sir? Does the virus have a leap year problem like Earth does? Uh, fractional day rotation. Yeah, uh, and uh, to be frank, I haven't worked a thing in that level of detail, but it, uh, it, it, of course it, it does. And uh, after a certain number of years, you would have to have an extra day in one month in order to make that up. Um, other questions? By the way, Mars also has not a north star, but it certainly has a celestial pole. And for those of you who are going to go to Mars, I'll tell you where it is. Uh, it's exactly halfway between Deneb, the bright star in the constellation of the Swan, and Alpha Cephei, the bright star in the constellation Cepheus. So you just take those two points, bisect it, and you'll find the, the position of the celestial pole on Mars, and you can use that to find your latitude. Okay, that could save your life someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot.